Jemima here from Soundsphere. Today I have a really exciting interview with Clarence James, an upcoming artist from Washington DC. So thank you Clarence for spending some time with me today. All right, thank you for having me. Okay, so first of all, uh, can you tell me a little bit about your background and how it's influenced your artwork? All right, sure. Well, yeah, again, thanks for having me. And this is a global, international interview going on, y'all. So this is pretty cool. Um, so my background, I was grow I grew up in Raleigh, North Carolina. That's the Southern United States. Uh, and I went to school at Howard University in Washington, D.C. Uh, I lived in New York for a couple of years and I live in, in D.C. again. Um, so I didn't necessarily, I haven't like always been painting my whole life or anything necessarily, but I've always been the same person, like in terms of like a creative person with a lot of energy. I've always had a certain perspective, um, you know, as a kid that maybe that equals for a young boy getting in trouble a lot and speaking out in class and stuff and, you know, not paying attention, you know, a lot of fun things. But then as it, you know, as I grow, I'm in, in, in a competitive academic environment too, right? So the school I went to, was uh, that was a big part of that. So I, I got to go to college on a full scholarship, but then kind of this is where, excuse me, we get specific about my story. So about halfway through, I'm on a full scholarship. I'm in the business school, but I kind of have this epiphany realization where I'm like, oh shit, this is not actually what I'm gonna do. This is like an idea that works for some people, could potentially work for anybody, but for me, it would have taken a great amount of uh, self-suppression, right? So for me to be who I really am and the way I like to interact with people and what I really, because I like people and I like, it's the communication that for me is the biggest part of making art. So I realized, I mean, I got to do something different. So I like took a semester off. I got all my money back from the university and I'll kind of like took that time to make a decision. And, um, you know, what, what I realized was, okay, I'm going to have to do something that I'm probably not going to get a lot of support for. I'm probably not, you know, people that want the best for me are going to look at it like, ah, oh, man, like, you know, it's going to confuse them. Um, and potentially, you know, I, I've been lucky to make sure that I still used my investment in terms of investing in a college degree, right? But I did incur some debt that maybe if, if I had known earlier, or if anyone knows earlier that they can avoid those types of things. I think people forget a lot of times that like, Steve Jobs and Bill Gates. There's there's a lot of people we look up to that came from the same places in America we came from, same neighborhoods, regular backgrounds, and were able to, uh, through innovation, right? And taking risk and just believing in themselves, driving on their vision of, of the world and their, finding their purpose, right? They've created these, these, you know, amazing things that have, that people have helped people. Yeah. So I had to realize, like, I got to make something that helps people, I think. And then I decided, OK, well, really practically, I was like, look, art is everywhere. Every home has some art in it. Every business has some art hanging in it. Like, you got to put something on the walls. So I was like, I don't feel like an idiot. You know, I feel I'm doing something like it's not a random better to say not like an idiot. But it's like, I don't feel like I'm doing being so random. I feel like, OK, this can work because it's essential. Yeah. I think it's essential. I think art is, is really essential. And the way people use it um, is really important. The way we use it to capture, to contextualize culture and time is super important. So yeah, I just started making art about 2013. I had to finish at school. So I finished with the marketing degree. And then when I finished school, I just kept turning it up, I guess, like more researching, more museum, more studying artists more trying to understand how that works mm -hmm. and then i started doing art shows and then i started organizing my own things i kind of had a, a network from college where i'm pretty active so i guess people were ready for i set myself up i put myself in a position where most people are going to look at me like yo he's a little different in terms of but then i'll it's funny, in my experience in life, a lot of times people will be taken aback, but then they realize, oh, he's actually pretty thoughtful about what he's saying or how he's acting or how something might come off, regardless of what my reaction might be. Then they find out like, oh, there's something behind it. It has some substance. So mm -hmm. yeah, that's basic background and why, what, how I started making uh, art and, and, and yeah. Yeah, yeah, great. So uh, what, 
well, who are your biggest influences and what kind of inspires you at the moment? Well, a young memory, honestly, uh, Picasso was one of those things. I don't know if it was PBS or NPR or something, mm -hmm. but when I, when I, you know, so I was introduced to what my concept of an artist was, right? Picasso. But as I get older um, and I realize art's kind of everywhere for me, I'm, I engage with life through brands like we all do, but it kind of affects me a special way. I really like certain things and the way a brand captures a feeling, a it create the communities get created around brands and brands are based on a visual. It's a logo and a name, right? So I was like, okay, I'm intrigued by that um like just kind of without trying so then when i start trying i'm like all right that's kind of how i make pvmt84 i got other things this other thing called one life at, for, at this point now i put forward like i'm clarence james and i'm the artist but before previously i'd put pvmt84 forward because of that same thing i will always perceive through brands so i was like oh, if i make a brand then it's its own entity that people can attach to and understand, and they'll start to participate um, in that. I think I don't think I answered your question really. <laughs> no, yeah, you kind of did. So, so biggest influences. So you mentioned. Oh yeah, 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 I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay, yeah, but so brands, right? Okay, I am. I still am. I'm on topic. And then, and then other like artists, like um, Basquiat's a big one because mm -hmm. I think his legacy is the most important aspect of it. There's a visual. There's an aesthetic and a and a skill to what he was doing. But at the end of the day, what he really was doing was communicating honestly um, without the refinement and that extra, like, uh, what I'm trying to, like, this snootiness of, like, mm -hmm. high art and fine art and what people are saying is art. You know, nothing he did, like, even, for example, specifically, look the way that he drew the Mona Lisa, right? He has a, a artwork where he does Mona Lisa. So it's, like, almost, a, it's a it's an in-your-face kind of... Um, rejection of the norm and kind of like uh calling people towards uh the kind of intrigue of like hey let's look at a bigger picture you know or a fuller picture or let's uh let's look past the veil you know or, or the veil i mean and, and let's like peel the curtain back you know there's other things so that's why the 84 was kind of my way of like re purposing a similar type of energy. Cause the other thing with Basquiat too, it's like, look, he's a black artist. I'm a black artist. He's a self-taught artist. I'm a self-taught artist. Mm -hmm. He was inspired by New York city. I'm super inspired by New York city. So I was like, look, I need to start. He provided kind of a blueprint in a way where it's like, okay, you can grow your audience through regular life, through word of mouth, using your social media handle and through street art or graffiti, right? So like if I walk around the city and I put PVMT84 on 20 doors that everyone else will see on their normal walk of life, right? Like that's the whole point of uh, of graffiti and street art. The nature of it is without a microphone, without partici without per permission, right? Without a platform, you're able to communicate on a mass scale, right? So that's why that's important too. So I kind of, and, and the way I was, interfacing with culture again through brands right mm -hmm. and and you've seen how uh so i was born in 91 so kind of my generation of millennials is the one are the ones who are kind of holding the relevance right now or the attention of the youth so like the 13 year olds and the 15 year olds 16 18 year olds are using the space we created by the ways we dress the music we listen to the kind of the the open nature of like uh, thinking about things not not just going with what people told you and looking deeper for stuff mm -hmm. so i was like look that's kind of where i formed the idea of okay i can be an artist and i can make actually make a career out of that mm -hmm. so yeah so i started with that and then there's other artists too like specifically to my identity artists like jacob lawrence uh carrie james marshall these artists uh Mark Bradford, there's, it's constant pioneering. A lot of times with it being America, you know, when you do things and you're part of a minority community, you're the first, you know, or you're the few. So it's an important space to develop the art space for minority communities. Cause not only, we don't participate in volume in the buying of it, the owning of it. 
and we're marginalized when it comes to the creation of it. So we have to, I feel like I have to put an effort to bridge all those different gaps. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. So you mentioned basket art. Um, I imagine you get compared to basket art a fair bit with like your art style and stuff. There's yeah. some stylistic sim similarities, uh, like the shapes and stuff prevalent in both your work. So how does this comparison make you feel? That's a good question. Um, okay, so basically, yeah, it used to bother me. Mm -hmm. All right, it's two things, right? You got to figure out, is someone complimenting you or are they trying to take away from what you're doing? So some people, I can tell when it's a compliment, but then I can always tell when it's a slight. So what's going on with those people when they say that? Because they're having a misunderstanding is what's going on with them. They're either having an insecurity or a misunderstanding or, or an overjudgment. Because in the reality, there's nothing new on this earth. You're as a baby, just learning how to speak, you mimic things, right? Information that you get. I mean, few people wrote the, the book themselves. You understand? You read books, you get information. Um, the style, I will credit, I'd credit Vasco with pioneering a style that artists would be able to use, a legacy, like I said, right? Now, if someone's mad at me or thinks there's something lesser of my work because it's street art inspired and I use spray paint and the aesthetic is what it is, then that's why the misunderstanding, they don't really understand how the imagery even comes to be, right? And then the second part would be, that's a legacy. And that's my legacy. That's my legacy. That's that's my ancestors. That's his work that he created a space now. And then I would also say, well, dude, there's, you, you're supposed to, right? So any person saying, having a problem with that, they're, they're still incorrect. You know, there's no point where they will ever have a valid point to try to slight someone, whether it's me or someone else, for being inspired by and using a new art form. It's like being mad at someone for using the internet or using a touch screen cell phone, right? You're mad at me because you use buttons and I use a touch screen, you know, or you're, you know, so, so no one use Apple phones because you didn't invent it. See what I'm saying, right? Yeah. So it's a legacy. So the, and the imagery is beautiful. The reason Basquiat works is because it's simple. Mm -hmm. It's a, uh, Again, it's a it's a in your face break of the norm, and it's and it's showing you that this is also valid, or this is this is just as valid. This is art as well. This is more emotional, if not more over and more direct than the art that y'all call art. So that would be another thing I'd say. Um, yeah, I would never. I don't. I would never copy anything. Um, I do. I have Basquiat books, man. I don't. I don't I'll never like peel the page open and like look at something he did and then try to recreate it. Mm -hmm. That's kind of not my style. It's more like a test. Yeah. It's like a test, man. Test. I mean, school's different now because they're on Zoom. But a regular test, you study beforehand, then you go in on the test and you get an A because you know what you're doing and you know what you you know the information. You know how to do it correctly, right? So that's why I would say, because that's the weird thing too. I think of like basketball, it's like Jordan, I'm like Kobe. It's like, you can't be mad at somebody for getting good at basketball. Like, what are you mad? So if someone mad that I'm making something that looks uh, uh, away and appeals to a lot of people, they angry about that, right? So I had to figure it out. It took a while for me to have a good answer for you um, because it would, it would take me aback because I'd be like, damn, why is someone trying to, when I would understand that they're trying to minimize what I'm doing with a yeah. comment like that, it made me be really thoughtful about what I was doing. Like, you know, what am I really doing? And um, if you look at the way I painted, it's it's evolved, but I've always painted the same way. Mm -hmm. And it comes straight from the inspiration of what I just explained. So yeah, yeah if anyone said that. So now I kind of maybe sarcastically a little bit, but not really, but in my head, I have my own little laugh about it. When someone comes with that energy, I really already know what's wrong with them. You see what I'm saying? And that's the thing too about life. Like people project their uncomfortabilities and their insecurities, all right? Now maybe you have something to do with that and that's why they're projecting it to you. But like when someone that you don't know acts a certain way, right? Like most like stranger behavior, right? If you're a stranger, if you're rude to strangers, there's something wrong with you. You know, like yeah, it's, it's your problem. And that's probably not their problem. It's mostly gonna be your problem. So same then, yeah, I figured out that those people have an issue. I feel really good about, again, to emphasize, like it's MLK Day. That's mm -hmm. a legacy. That's somebody that lived a life. You tell people, don't do, don't use anything that he uh, made possible. So that's how I look at Basquiat, right? Yeah, this, 
someone had to do it. Someone had to paint like this on a large scale, on a legitimate scale, because it's a legitimate art form, right? Mm -hmm. And whether it's like graffiti in itself too, it's like, you know, there's other artists, Keith Haring's helped, even Andy Warhol helped, even though he's more of like a pop artist in my opinion. But that's the point of art too. You have to push culture forward. You have to push yeah. everybody opinions forward yeah, and stuff definitely i mean everyone's influenced by someone anyways so like right right quite normal to have this similarity between the people that came before us so um, yeah. what so what kind of music do you actually because we are a music magazine mainly what kind of music okay. do you listen to uh while making art mm, well in the forefront like so this would be like my answer about taking a test right is a it's a cumulative of what you know right mm -hmm. so music that i'm and now i'm not every day playing Jimi hendrix i'm not every day playing bob marley i'm not every day um playing wu-tang right or every day i don't play biggie i don't play these people i'm naming every day right but there's a lot of music i named some of them that has a form of foundation for me of uh inspiration and, and ideas and creativity people that inspire me are people that are themselves and kind of live boldly with like the courage to, to be alone almost. Right. When everyone is kind of not ready for their ideas or something, mm -hmm. but more current music that I really listen to heavy rotation is young thug. I got a little Dirk in the rotation. I got a little Uzi in the rotation. I have a, uh, who else is really in there? Those might be the top three. Uh, for really like what am I going to play when I when I want to raise my energy level up mm -hmm. because I have already stored up mad creativity and inspiration but in a current like right now like if I was to start painting right now that probably be something I'd play uh, you know a little Uzi and Future I didn't mention Future but Future too all those and, and this is the thing too like someone like Travis Scott right I'm 30 he's 30 you know, I went to school with his uh, his DJ, this kid Chase, and he's a cool guy, and I respect what they've been able to do. And what they're doing is the culture that we grew up with. <laughs> like I was saying before, you know, it's just like, as an individual, you don't even really get aware of like the world as a perspective till, you know, you're like 18, and yeah. now you're kind of getting in, and you form this like worldview by the time you get into your 20s, you should probably have a solid world view, right? You should probably think about what everyone's doing. So, I mean, it, I mean, it's not like, I'm not like a huge Drake fan or anything, but Drake has these moments that affected everybody. You know what I mean? So like when an artist is on that huge scale, that's important. Now, other, now going even deeper, James Brown, Prince, Mike Jackson, you know, um, Rolls Royce, people might not know this, Earth, Wind and Fire. Uh, who else? Who else? Rick James. Um, what else? Who else? Real quick. Isley Brothers. Gap Band. That's Charlie Wilson. And then you. And then and that's like the old classics kind of era. Name some people. And then of course, I love Jodeci and uh, Drew Hill. Cisco. Love that music. You know, love uh, Aaliyah and Sade. Love. Um, who else? like Erica Badu and Outkast and, uh, uh, you know, so, you know, and so like, you know, cause as time's moving yeah. and other, other point, you know, like Outkast albums have contextualized time and moments, you know, and then like Dr. Dre's Chronic and Chronic 2001, right? Snoop Dogg in, in, in his musical career, mm -hmm. Pharrell, love Pharrell, right? Huge. He's more than music for me, but he's mostly music. Mm -hmm. And his inspiration and creativity is is is, is very bright. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, that's a good rundown of a lot of artists and a lot of new stuff too. Like uh there's this like Ella May, there's this group, there's a lot of female music out right now. And I like bro, I'm I like City Girls. I like um damn Sawiti and them. Like they make their energy is is infectious, man. And they're and they're good, like Nicki Minaj, Cardi B, like they mm -hmm. You know, I'm not gonna go run the mile for them, but I do enjoy their music too. Yeah. Lil yeah. Wayne. I didn't say Lil Wayne. I'm sorry. If I would be lying to you, that's another special thing about I'm I'm 30 now, right? So I was born in 1991. Lil Wayne's music career and the music he put out 
captured moments for us. You know what I mean? So it's like, if, as an artist, and I'm sure someone could say that shit about like Taylor Swift. Oh, and I didn't say Kanye West. That's disrespectful because he's also a huge uh, contributor to the movement of our creativity, right? I feel like now people are so much more comfortable being creative, taking a risk to make something happen. And a lot of those musicians I named are made it possible for people to feel that way. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, you're clearly a very like introspective person. Uh, and you've mentioned before how Pavement um, 1984 is like a concept intended to encourage people to open yeah. their minds. So my question is, what is your life philosophy and how important is spirituality in your day-to-day -day life? Okay, well, my, my life philosophy, it's called One Life. Now, PVNT 84 is about recognizing the 84 and building a road pavement to a place that's different than people not being aware. So when we become what aware- 84 represent, sorry. 1984, the book by George Orwell, where oh. there was Big Brother and the life was crazy. Yeah, that whole book is really interesting. Mm -hmm. um, like you open the, I opened the book up randomly the other day and I'm reading the part. There's a part where the, the main character tastes wine for the first time. See you know what I'm saying? Because wine's illegal. No one can drink it because you can't get drunk because then you're going to be too free. You know, you're going to, so it's like 1984. But um, yeah, so my life philosophy, I call it one life. So there's the heavy influence that right now I'm not in that phase. Right now I'm drawing a lot of, uh, and painting a lot of faces because I'm focusing on the human aspect of it and I'm trying to connect people to themselves and to each other. But before I was doing a lot, like what's on the wall, a lot of symbolic stuff. And the semiotics are based on a lot of ancient knowledge, right? Like a lot of pyramids. Yeah, a lot of pyramids and stuff and focus on Kemet, focus on Egypt and and older in the, there's the old world and the new world. And then there's the major civilizations that kind of laid the framework for what got reinvented into like religions and stuff nowadays and different things. But you see now in the mass, people are are getting it now that the whole, everything about like sacred geometry and fractals and all the way our, where we are in physics now, our concept of the universe, our concept of gravity and all, you know, in time and, and, and having this, this greater knowledge, which is an expansion, but my focus, I call it one life, is about the integration of everything. It's about the synthesis of everything because we're part of everything. Mm -hmm. So nothing is separate, right? I think that's a, and this is one of those things you study, when you study certain schools of thought, like comedic, spiritual science, or whether it's like 5%, 5 percent, 5 percenter, or like a lot of different, a lot of black knowledge systems or African knowledge systems versus Western knowledge systems, they have different methodologies and they have different concepts of life, right? So an African worldview is much more integrative, whereas a European worldview, a Western worldview is just like the periodic table elements. It's about separating, isolating everything to understand it, but the rest of the story is how everything works together, right? Because for example, our bodies, right? We're truly a micro of the universe, right? You have to eat you're made of. You have to eat vitamins and minerals, all that. Those are just the substances of every, you know what I'm saying? So your body's made up of what everything else is made up of, you know, you're whatever, 70% water, whatever, right? So, mm -hmm. you know, even that is proving, and, that, and that's kind of what I mean. Like when you, when you study nature, which is, immoral or you know what i mean like it doesn't it has nothing to do with morality is what i'm trying to say it's objective yeah. i think that's where you're going to notice what god truly is and then when you can relate how your body works in the same exactitude right the same way it rains it rains for an exact reason electricity works an exact way right your body works mm -hmm. an exact way now when it starts to become subjective is now we think because we're individual people that we can behave however we want. Mm -hmm. So we now, now, now we're like, oh, we have to respect everything because you can do anything because, you know, in the world started from this super conservative view on people and judgments and status quo, but a much more open one 
but I think in total, it's like you have to figure out, and then this brings in like karma, right? It's like everything is cause and effect. So an action is going to have a reaction, whatever it is. So then it's an understanding of that too, to understand why certain things are the way they are. Yeah. And so yes. Yeah, so would you yeah. say you're religious or spiritual then? So I grew up in like the the Christian environment. My mom sent me and my sisters to private Catholic schools. They're best schools in the area. Now my grandma was a Catholic uh, lady that sent all her kids to uh, Catholic private schools in St. Petersburg, Florida. Now the thing about those institutions are they, uh, excuse me, they're, they're part of this big system. So what I'm basically, long story short, religion is like a government. You can't necessarily call that good. Mm-hmm. What, it's gonna be subject to corruption, just like any other organization, any other business, anything you structure like a business is a bureaucracy. Mm-hmm. Anything that's bureaucratic, I mean, there's just a lot of human influence on it. So I'm not like go to church every Sunday. I would honestly encourage people not to do something mm-hmm. like that because it's a mind binding experience. The word religion itself is a constricting word. The etymology of it is about tying you back to a belief. It's not about expanding your belief. It's about tying you back to a specific belief based on the rituals you do to sustain that belief, right? So I'm much more, I guess you could call it spiritual, but I call it like rational or reality. Like I just call it reality because, you know, religion's got to rely on dogma (laughs) and, and they make doctrines based off dogma. And I don't want to offend anybody, but, you know, by this point in time, I hope people understand, like, what dogma is. Yeah. You know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, and, and, and basically, at this point in time, when information is decentralized, when it's available, when you don't maybe even need, really need to go to college because you can learn a skill outside of that or you can get information in a lot of different forms, it really exposes how archaic religion is in my opinion right mm-hmm. and they and, and their their system of also the biggest fa- fa- uh, fallacy to me is it removes god from the individual it puts god out there in the sky somewhere unreachable it puts mm-hmm. heaven someplace that you'll get to when you die it puts hell some punishment based on the behaviors you do right when i think in reality i'm more to the buddhist understanding of the nirvana the mm-hmm. hindu understanding there's a state of being that is heaven. There's a state of existence that is nirvana, right? Mm-hmm. Rather, and, and there's also, there's yeah, there's a state of existence that is like that hell, right? But I see hell on earth. There's there's hell on earth for sure. Mm-hmm. Because, uh, yeah. you know, because it, it's really when you deny all of the good, that's you get the result, which is all of the bad. And you know, so, yeah. So, you know, I don't know if a lot of, <laughs> talk to a priest, don't talk to a priest that would say half of the shit I just said. Talk to, you know what I mean? Talk to a monk and, yeah you know people i'm about breaking those barriers man because again one life when you realize that everything is somebody's opinion someone's unique perspective trying to solve the same problem so yeah maybe i got part of it right maybe he got part of it right maybe over there in china for a thousand years when they wasn't interacting with anybody else they got it right and then maybe there was an idea over in the mediterranean that kind of was working with some, you know, and then at this point, we can learn something from everyone, can't we? Exactly. All ideas are on the table now. So it's like, you really should be like, but what happens? Mm -hmm. Religion got Jewish people will never listen to Muslim people. Muslim people will never listen to Jewish people or Christians. Never. They will never be wrong. They will always be the ones right fighting for the right while everyone else is wrong. You know, and that's just a, that's Mm -hmm. not it. That's not real. That's not real. That's destructive, actually. And it's backwards and it's holding people, it's holding humanity back from uh, the true evolution, which is, you know, and that, I put that, I put it on every post I make on my page, PVMT84. Go follow it because this is a video. Every post I put up there on the bottom, I put that. My mission is to raise the collective consciousness, right? We have to activate that it's necessary that each person has their own experience where they understand the realness of what I'm kind of imploring to you and to anyone that watches this. It's important to think for yourself. It's important to test your ideas out. You need experience, you need failures. Do not just listen to what someone tells you and just do it blindly all the time. Skepticism is healthy, you know, now you don't want to take too far. Yeah, but you know, it's, it's really a thing too, because that's what, 
I realized as well, there's different type of people. There's a nice girl like you. There's someone like me that cares about t talking about it. And then there's people that will just take advantage of people not knowing. Mm -hmm. There's people that are ruthless about it. They they love the power they have and they do not want to lose it. And, and they'll set systems up to prey on the weaker people and the less informed people. That's a huge part of life. So Have you uh, created like a piece of art kind of relating to religion and your views on dogma and stuff? Uh, I made one, but then I didn't really make any more. It's not fun. It's not a fun subject. Yeah. Uh, you're dealing with the most like intimate fears people have, which mm -hmm. is really, you know, you can't really just have a light convo about that. And so it's, it's not really effective. If I wanted to make it my total mission, I don't really want that much hate, you know, yeah. I don't really yeah, want exactly. that city. Yeah. Like, to do it so much. I gave you my opinion right here. Mm. Someone's gonna hear it and be like, yo, he's really negative. You know, hopefully everyone realizes that I'm not at all. Mm -hmm. I really just want the- uh, You're just open-minded, that's all. I want the truth, yeah. that's all. I want the truth. What is that even, right, you know? But mm. that's what I prefer. That's what I, in my imagination, when before I realized the world is full of lies and facades and being fake and showing face and keeping up with the Joneses. I thought everybody was honest. I thought reality was true. Mm -hmm. But then I found out, oh man, there's a lot of people that prey on information, lack of information. You make That's what the whole point of a secret. Once I make information a secret, I become powerful. I take advantage of everybody that doesn't know what I know. Mm -hmm. That's the university in a big way. Sorry to, um, but last thought, because I made a comment on that earlier. That's what the university has become. If you don't go to an Ivy League school, if you don't go to Cambridge, Oxford, it's just a rare amount of people that are going to make really good on that investment. You spend like $100,000, dollars getting an undergraduate degree. You should be able to get a job that, that you know, you deal with that debt pretty quickly. But few people do, so. Yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah, the edu education system isn't great. Like, well, well, particularly in America and the UK, I feel. But, I feel too, because I heard it's free in Germany to go to college and stuff like that. Yeah, so. definitely. So um, obviously you're still, you're quite a young artist. Like you're still kind of in your early stages of your career. Uh, how are you managing, like navigating the art world? And do you have any advice for budding fine artists? Yeah, so I take advantage of the special space. It's a new thing, again, like some of the themes I've been talking about. So the internet has helped me do something that maybe wasn't possible before. I truly get on Instagram and post artwork I make and people really participate in that process, right? And they want to buy things and they buy things and they inquire and I feel motivated. And I use that as my business, man. Mm -hmm. Like I don't have to throw, I just got a studio that we're in. I just got this this year. Though, well, I've only been here for one year total so far, right? But I've been selling artwork for six, seven years, right? So how was I able to do that? The internet. Nah, so that'd be my easy, simple advice would be like, put some effort into your social media. It will return you um, business. And then, but really I would just say work, work hard and focus mm -hmm. on, it's about, People got to be able, it's about making it simple. People need to be able to understand what you're talking about quicker. I kind of suffered from that early of being too confusing. Um, and I think a lot of people weren't able to connect with it immediately because of that. It would take more explanation, you know, like, but um, it should communicate simply. What was the other part of the question, other than advice? Uh, how did you navigate the art world? So, yeah, so navigating the social world. media. I got you, I got you. So navigating the art world. So yeah, when I started being an artist, doing the art shows, that's part of it. Being on social media, grow your audience. You show up in person, you do an art show, you sell some work, great. You do an, a, an event, or you do a group show, or you set up, you, you do a pop-up with maybe some friends you have that have another brand. These are all things I did. You you go and I would, I had, basically I had things moving in New York, LA, and DC in terms of like, you could go see me doing things in these three places. And then I added um, Art Basel in Miami as like an annual thing where I would also go and either do an event or you would see me doing a mural or whatever it is. And um, now um, I'm with this gallery now, it's called DTR Modern. And um, 
excellent gallery, awesome reputation. They do great work. Shouts out to uh, Jenny in DC. She's she's awesome. But that allows me to do what maybe most people think immediately. Okay, if I'm going to be an artist, I need to get in a gallery. But you really you can not, you can do so much without relying on needing a gallery. Mm-hmm. But I will say that even just in this short amount of time I've been working with them, it's definitely worth it. And I had made it a goal of mine because of, uh, it's almost like the credentials, the the uh, legitimacy now that I have for my work, because there's an entire audience that maybe doesn't get to get to me on the internet, but that's why galleries exist. They have a whole customer base, a whole client base of collectors and people, really do have art budgets like you know there's no necessarily medium uh median or or mean you know but people have like a hundred fifty thousand dollar art budgets annually and they feel like they need to buy art because art is important it's not an expense it's an investment right because it's an alternative asset so the reason like the louvre in paris and you know sotheby's auction and christie's auction is because people need to be able to protect their investment. When you buy an $80 million Basquiat, right? When you buy a $40 million Warhol, you do that because it's better than having cash. It's going to appreciate, it's gonna hold value and appreciate. You can't, it's part of your estate now, right? So those are the type of, that knowledge makes a gallery really necessary because the gallery is what gives you the official channels, uh, what's called your primary market so that people can buy your art and then there can be speculation on it. We call the secondary market where people speculate on the value of it, which requires appraisals and things like that. But it's really hard to do that just on, you can't just do that on the internet. Oh, I'm on the internet, but yeah, like, you know, some things you need the institution's participation yeah. Even being a musician, right? Like, you know, you want to be Chance the Rapper, that's great and all, but you also want to be anyone that signs with a with a big label. It should be a partnership that exchanges value. So I feel like we're doing that. And and yeah, I feel how, like the next- how, how exactly did you go about like working with the gallery? Did you just show up with like a portfolio? How did, how did, how did it how did it happen? Yeah. Okay, I applied for a bunch and they either tell you yes or no. They either tell you we're taking artists right now or not. And I got in contact with this gallery kind of through another artist uh, working with them. And then they came and visited my studio and saw all the work and saw what I have going on here. And I guess that uh, made them feel confident in working with me. And that's how it worked for me. Mm -hmm. Um, Excuse me, for other people, maybe, maybe they submit to like 300, 500, or many galleries that they can find. And maybe they get returns. Maybe they treat it like interviewing, you know, like job hunting in a way, you know, like where they just send their portfolio to a ton of galleries. But I think the strongest way in life to move, honestly, uh, you have to, um, it's relationships. So one of the things that um, really helps um, generations move in a upward direction is mentorship, right? it's relationships and everything is basically mentorship. Basically, if you don't have participation from the people that are in control of things, you know, it's just gonna be, it might take longer, it might be more difficult. You might be able to get it done, but. Yeah, networking definitely makes your job so much easier, doesn't it, so. Exactly. Yeah, so um, obviously with everything, it's been quite a hectic, like past year, I guess, so many, yeah. Uh, social concerns, impeachment going on. It's been Twice. pretty crazy. Yeah. Um, so how does your work comment on these kind of current social political issues? Um, I make some work that specifically comments on current stuff as it pertains to the 84. What I mean by that is um, when COVID dropped, and I say it that way on purpose, right? And because there's a really sinister nature to it that requires more research. And then also because it has
He's just frozen. Just give him a sec. Just pause it. Okay, uh -huh. it's pause. You might have to edit that. I don't know, you know, you might have to edit that. So but we basically, what happened was you said COVID dropped and then you just cut out. So, <laughs> okay, why did that happen? <laughs> oh, the internet was just so bad, I guess. Maybe you're not supposed to talk about certain topics. Now I'm just kidding. See, but that's how people Seriously. feel sometimes. That's how people feel sometimes because they'd be like mm -hmm. super sussed out and like, but that's how the world is. Mm -hmm. Like, look, even though Trump was completely wrong. Hey, but him getting banned off Twitter it should scare you. The way that you can get deplatformed from what we thought were forums for free speech mm -hmm. should be an eye opener for people. They were never forums for free speech. You just thought they were, but they're mm -hmm. not. And if they don't like what you're saying, they, they will deactivate your account. Mm -hmm. So that's interesting. But yeah, to the COVID comment. So I made a bunch of artwork when COVID dropped. Then when George Floyd happened, that kind of strengthened the momentum of like, man, I need to make artwork that comments on current things and the current sentiment as it pertains to the 84, which means that any moment where you need to understand what's really happening, regardless of what they said on the news, regardless of what might feel good and comfortable, you know, you need to see who is taking advantage of situations and then you need to know your place in it are you about to be taken advantage of or are you about to be a casualty of someone else's actions mm -hmm. um so yeah so i do make some current work uh well, I, all the time one, one one series i really like is i use a newspaper mm -hmm. so like i'll take like one edition of the washington post or one edition of the new york times and create like collage and then finish it with spray paint and such yeah. because that's important to me and i think the news is the main device for control and manipulation on a mass scale. You break it down, there's about five companies that own all media outlets, right? So, you know, so even knowing that information to like, why are you giving things the benefit of the doubt when in plain, it's plainly organized in a way that does not include, it's in it, you know what I mean? So it's like, yeah, these definitely. people, right, these people are a part of a, agenda let's just say mm -hmm. agenda and it could be easy it could be ASPN the agenda today is to cover sports and talk about LeBron and whatever right maybe with CNN the agenda is to represent a certain opinion right yeah. when it's Fox News the agenda is to represent a certain opinion mm -hmm. and I'm just saying that that's a little dangerous when you start calling that the truth yeah definitely yeah I think corruption in the media is the media is so powerful. It really is. It really can shape entire elections and governments and stuff. So, so we've really got to be aware of kind of who's behind the screen, really, who's typing this up, who's putting these right. kind of shows That's on. Why good, good journalism is important, too, for that same reason that you just highlighting, because it's like, look, you got to be able to rely on your sources of information. And if someone's doing bad journalism, so basically bad journalism has opinions. Good journalism... Not to say that a piece, like, you know, when a journalist writes a piece, it might be called an opinion, like an op-ed, but it's like their opinion is going to always be based upon giving a, a honest account of mm -hmm. whatever it is, right? Or, you know, you know it's, not pre it's not about taking advantage of a situation to get a message across, right? That's when you got to be careful about good, uh, yeah. good journalism, you know? Yeah, for sure. So what have you got planned for the future? And uh, is Pavement 1984 concept you're considering changing or dropping? No, I'm not considering changing it. What I realize now is, you know, I'm, I'm Clarence James. I think that's a good, strong name to just be an artist with. You know, I thought of other names uh, to use, but I'm like, whatever, I'll just use mine. I have a special story about that that mm -hmm. will be uh, extrapolated into a um, series. Well, I'm not going to... No spoiler alert. Oh, okay. Um, okay so. Yeah. But, but I, so basically how I look at it now is like PVMT A4. That's like, these are the philosophies I teach. These are the, these are my courses. These are my lessons, right? Like this is my sermon. So mm -hmm. whether PV84 and One Life, I'm Clarence James. I'm now the top of the umbrella in anything I do, any, whether I want, I look at it like product lines, right? 
if I want to start something new, I look at it as a as a growth or an extension. So the the plan is to basically let's see. I mean, I don't know where I'm at right now. The working with the gallery kind of just takes up a lot of the bandwidth. But the good thing is that the mission is to well, let me say it like this. They're giving me the freedom to continually grow. So even though right now we're mainly selling the faces that I've done over the past few months, um, but they're prepared to like maybe take on the next collection. I, I show them and they and they like it, and uh, and they, and they feel like their their collectors will like it. So yeah. So okay. But then other things that <laughs> it's hard to get to everything. I do want to have get more merchandise out. I do want to get uh, like you said, I need to do some prints. Yes, I don't even do some prints, definitely. Yeah. yeah, do drop some t-shirts or something. Like your your work would be yeah. amazing on clothes. Thank you. Yeah, that's what I mean when I said merch. I should have said t-shirts. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, but no, I I do mean merch because yeah, t-shirts are merchandise, but also like a coffee mug with my logo, you know, or yeah, a, a notebook with some art as the cover, and you know, all these different little ideas that can uh, that people will novelty, I guess, is the word. Mm -hmm. It's a little, little cute stuff, a little like, oh man, this is dope. You know, he, on a smaller scale, something that's still desired. So maybe some of those things too. I want to make an action figure. I want to make a, I want to uh, shoot a movie. I want to make, uh, record an album. Um, Speaking of shooting a movie, yeah. have you done much work with animation? Because I feel like that'd be really interesting with your kind of art style. Interesting that you know about that. So you had a conversation with somebody about, animation before and they especially like the ones like how the wall looks behind me and there's other if you look on the page I used to paint like that a lot um each one of those individual you can find groups that could be vectorized and we can potentially animate some mm -hmm. of this stuff that exists already so I did think about that yeah gotta get it done though I've really been focused on just like making endless artwork and trying to promote myself so mm -hmm. now I feel like I gained some ground so I can start to expand the other things yeah do you think you'll take on anyone to help with you kind of expanding and social media and stuff so you can focus on actually making the art? Yeah, I definitely thought about that. There's different ways to do that. For example, making the shirts, I, I was, I probably still will uh, work with this graphic designer on it. He's his own, he's got his own stuff going on, but working with him may save me time and may strengthen the effect. Um, now maybe I need to get on Fiverr and get a get a like a weekly secretary or something. I could use a helper to help me organize stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and the third thing would be in DC. There's an organization called Wakef, and they kind of their venture capital, I guess, you is the right term. Mm -hmm. So I did have a pretty sweet idea to bring to them, and I talked to some people there that worked there, and they liked it. Um. Well, that's that exciting. Was, you've got things planned then. You've got you've got a vision for the future, really. But, I'm getting um, tired. This, this interview is deep. I got to practice more, man. How am I going to make the three-hour podcast if I'm already... <laughs> well, we've just got one more question, so don't worry. Um, so, in a, say in a couple of years, you're a world-renowned artist, multi-millionaire, whatever. Sure. What sure. parts of you do you hope that your future your future self will not change? Yeah, for sure. Definitely happening. How do I hope my future self will not change? So is there anything you'd like to say to your future self now? Oh, excuse me. Um, just the humility. Uh, just stay humble and work hard and humility. Every time I found that I play too much to my ego, react too quickly to a situation, I'm usually wrong and I feel dumb later. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'd only just remind myself of future self of that. Just, you know, make sure you stay humble. Make sure you still appreciate everything and everyone and every moment. Uh, you got to remember what it was like to not have anything and to not, and to feel marginalized and to feel like you didn't have an audience. Mm -hmm. Don't forget what that was like and just keep working hard. I tell them, that's what I tell myself. <laughs> well, that's good. That's great. So thank you so much for your time. It's actually been such a pleasure talking to you.
Nice. Yeah, that was more fun than I thought it'd be. I kind of oh, avoided, nice. avoided you on the first one. I was like, I don't know who this person is, and I don't know if I want to talk to her that long. Mm-hmm. Well, it was but great. It was really interesting. Around. Yeah, I'm glad we came around because, yes, this was fun. I enjoyed it. Okay, brilliant. So uh, thank you again. And for those who are interested, um, his website, do you want to drop your plug, plug, right, plug everything? I got you. Okay, the website is PVMT. 84.com mm-hmm. Instagram is the same thing P V M T 84 I just took some letter vowels out of pavement P V M T 84 and then uh website Instagram I'm on Twitter but I don't care about Twitter but it's the same thing P V M T 84 maybe get on Twitter and get my followers up so I feel like I'm talking to enough people I don't feel like I'm talking to enough people so I don't really use it and um yeah that's it brilliant well, thank you everyone go check out his artwork it's absolutely incredible and hopefully we can talk sometime soon okay all right yes all right, cheers thank you all right cheers